Hello, welcome to Clarity Design. Today we're going to be uh, using After Effects CC um, and I'm going to take you through some of the very basics on uh, where stuff is and what you can do with it. Uh, so without further ado, let's give it a go. First thing you need to do is make a composition. Composition is like your timeline um, and you usually set one up for a little scene. Uh, After Effects is not really a video editor, it's more of an image composite program. So you're likely to do some very intense short bits of graphical work on here rather than uh, longer uh, edits and such like. You'll move across to something like Premiere Pro to do those sorts of things. So the duration time of 30 seconds is probably quite accurate, um, as particularly for a starting animation or just to have a play around. You'll notice that it says HDTV24 on mine, you've probably got 29.7 as default. It will open up with the last one you used. So uh, this is the last one that I used. HD is good um, for uh, mucking around. Obviously you can go quite high, um, but the higher you go, the more memory it takes to play and hold those images. So do think about that and what you need when you get out the end. Some of you won't have realized that not all pixels are square, um, but we can work with square pixels for now. Um, if it's staying on a computer, you'll be fine with that. If you're going to television or film, uh, you need to think about uh, some of the other dimensions of pixels, but we'll be happy with square for now. So the du uh, duration 30, color of background is black. That's always good to start and we'll leave it at that. Click OK. Now we've got a composition, that's the first thing that's over in my project panel, a composition, it's an actual object. And when we go to File Save, we're saving this composition and anything else that's in here is actually linked. So if I want to add something to this, the easiest way is to double click, um, but we can also import from the file menu as well. So if we double click, that'll open up. Uh, and you can see I've got a sample video here, just the Windows sample video, and I can click on that and it says import as, and we can import it as footage. If I had an image sequence, it would give me some other options here. If I had a Photoshop file, it would also give me some other options as I import it. We'll have a look at that in another video. For now, I'm just going to import this footage. Import. Now you can see that my composition has got, uh, has got wildlife uh, here. Now that import, all it's done is it's linked to wherever that file is. So if I take this composition and I save it and then I put it on a cloud somewhere and I don't take that with it, then the link between this composition and this will change. And that means that the next time it tries to look for it, it won't be able to find it. And I'm going to have to relink it, import it again and relink it to the work. Now that's possible. It's not very difficult to do, but it's a bit of a time waster. So the first thing you probably want to do is make a folder in Windows or in uh, Mac, make a folder, and inside that folder, you want to make a you want to make your composition, save it there, and then you want to put all of your resources into that same folder, and that way the links will never change. You upload the whole folder to your cloud or to your um, uh, into your USB drive, and you download them all again, and that way uh, all the links stay the same. Now, if you get a lot of stuff here, you can add folders inside this window um, so that you can start to organize it. At the moment, we don't need to worry about it. So that's our project panel, that's where we hold all of our resources, at the moment we just have one. And down here we've got our timeline, you can see it shows all of the 30 seconds. We can do less than that if we want, down at the scroll bar at the bottom, or we can do the whole thing. So that's how to change that. We can drag this down into here and let go, and that will make the first layer. There it is, off it goes. Okay, so the classic film there. So you'll notice that there's green lines appearing at the top of this uh, bar. Now what happens when I play this back with a play here, what it's doing is it's going to load all of those images one by one, frame at a time, into the RAM memory, the random access memory. Now whilst it's loading that in, it can't play at full speed. You can see at the moment it's 17 frames per second. Okay, not real time. So it's warning me, it, I'm showing this to you, but it's not real speed. When I go back, now that it's loaded into the RAM memory, we should get much closer to real speed. There we go, real time. All right, so that we know that we're seeing it real time. The reason After Effects does this is so that when you're working on a small amount of intense animation where there's a lot of layers here, it can load those images in and show it real time. There would be way too much for it to process real time and show it to you. So it uses RAM in this way so that you can view things real time, short, intense spurts. Now that means that there's two play buttons. There's one play button 
that lets it load into the memory and lets you work on an object like we've just been using. And there's another play one here in preview menu. There's another one here which is a RAM preview. Now the RAM preview will fill up the RAM on the computer and then play back the section you've got. And there's some options in there as well. So you can tell it the frame whether you want to skip frames so you can see more of your uh, animation and you can do a whole heap of other stuff in there so have a good look around it says from current time full screen so those are fairly obvious options if you have a click and play around you can't break anything and I can move it around my scene I'm on the selection tool here I can move it I can rescale it using shift will help to keep the proportions so that's shift selected without shift selected and shift selected again. Okay, you can see that it's scaling from this point here. Now I can move that inside the options for this to select it and open up your transform down here. Now, what we've got here, this little dot in the middle, is called the anchor point. So I can move the anchor point. It looks like it's moving the image, but in fact, it's the anchor point that's being reset. Now I can move the position which is the anchor point being moved across the frame. Now when I move it around, or even better, rescale it, you can see that it's scaling from the anchor point. All right, this is an important principle, because if you start animating and then you move the anchor point later on, then it will start to mess around with what you think you've done. Now, we've gone into these options down here, and you can see these are the animation the uh, tracks so we can put animations onto these this stopwatch here indicates whether it's going to record something called a keyframe if I want to animate an object let's say I'm going to move this film from one side to the other I need to switch that on it automatically makes the first keyframe which is this diamond shape as I move to another time I can change the position and you can see it starts to draw a motion path for me Okay, so there we go. So I've got an animation between these two points and the frame is moving. All right, I've started to make an animation. We can start to have a look at that in more detail. All right, we can right click and we can do an easy ease. This means it's going to slowly start and slowly finish. Let's watch it. And then it'll speed up and then it'll slow down again. So we're starting to get a little bit more control of our animation. We can also see it on a graph, so we can see what this is happening. That was this little button here. Okay, so we can have a look at what's happening. And we can even play around with that a little bit by picking up handles and changing them. All right, so we can play around with what we want in this scene. There's loads of options down here you can play around with. If you get stuck or you find that you've made a mistake and you want to clear it out, it's very easy to sort out. Simply select this again. That will wipe all of the animation information. It will keep it where it was in the position of the frame that you were on. So be warned, if you do that and you've got a lot of animation work on there, you're going to lose all your animation. All right, But if you get in a mess, it's a great way to get back to how you were to begin with. So let's just have a look at one more thing. Over here, we've got an effects panel. Now this is really nice. You can see these effects up here as well and also some of them in the layers so you can have a look at how you play around with layers but inside here we can type different elements that we might want so you can see light layer markers here like leaks random so we can start to apply stuff to our scene um, and you can see that that's randomly happening there as soon as I applied that we had loads of more options that are animation uh, based all up here all of these with the stopwatches, they can be recorded. Okay, so we can have loads of fun with applying effects and different samples to video footage or to layers. Let's just have a look at one more layer. Okay, so if I want to add something new, I can go to Layer New. Notice the shortcuts that are listed up here. It's always good to start to learn the shortcuts. That's one way of making a new layer. Another way is to right click on the uh, work area and go to new and in this case we'll go to text text now that puts the cursor in the middle of the screen ready to type there's my text set up with uh, some options down here so let's see if we can find it character let's pull that let's pull that out there we go so 
over here, I've got the ability to change everything that I want to about this text, including giving it an outline. Okay, that's what the black line that you've got at the moment. If I want to change the size of it, let's move back into the selection tool and we will drag that out a little bit. There we go. Okay, I now have a text layer. The text layer is on top of the wildlife layer. If I want to change that back, I can put it underneath. Okay, just drag it, click on it, drag it up and change it. Okay, if I want to then animate it, just as before, I can click on this arrow and I can go into here and I can start finding the bits I want to animate. Sometimes it's easier to know a shortcut. If I want to change the position of it, I'm going to press P. And P with that layer selected means it's going to just show me the position slider. If I had more than one selected and I press P, it will show me all of them. And when I change one, oh, when I change one, it will change both. 